If you are new to First Church and new to this form of worship, which is liturgical worship, we ask you to have patience with yourself and patience with us. It is our great desire to help each of us individually and collectively open our spirits to the divine, to that divine spirit that lives deep within us and that spirit that is the image that we have been created in. I love the first words. I love all of the words, Laurel, to that piece. But the first words, O fire of the spirit and defender of every life created, holy are you, giving life to every form. So we give thanks for the world, for nature, for all of the pieces that we are part of. Today, at this very moment, the closing ceremony of the 2024 Olympics in Paris is occurring. From the moment it began 16 days ago, the entire Olympic experience has been an incredibly beautiful feast for the world. There is no other city like Paris, and the people who call that great city home have given their very best in every possible way to make this year's Olympics one of the most delightful and meaningful events in our time. I think the world desperately needed this gift. In our house, we have one person who is very enthusiastic about watching every single part of the Olympics. There's a second person who is not nearly as enamored as the first. And there is a dog, a dog who absolutely hates the Olympics. A dog who has let us know his displeasure continually over the past two weeks. Of course, this is a dog who absolutely loves Hallmark movies. In fact, in fact, when we are going to be away for a few hours, like on Sundays, we turn on the air filter for noise and the Hallmark channel for his movies. He gets into his bed in the den and does not move until we come home. Night after night, as I have watched the Olympics with the enthusiast, I feel like I have been tuned in to the frequency of the athletes and the ways in which they seem so different from previous years. I remember the competition between countries over the past several decades being almost outrageous. You could see and even feel through your screen this deep-seated anger that often bordered on hatred. It often felt as if that was fueled by coaches who were terrified of their governments or by the fear of failure or perhaps the shame that would travel home with the athletes if they failed to bring home the gold. I think those memories are the major reason I have never really enjoyed the marathon of the Olympics. But this year was decidedly different. And this difference was illustrated in so many ways. The author Brad Stolberg reminds us that we are all drawn to stories of individuals who not only embody the pursuit of excellence, but who also have humility. I loved reading the posts on social media from so many of my friends who have lifted up the powerful athletes who have persevered. They have persevered to not only win medals, but also to strengthen their humanity and their humility. 
In doing so, they are ushering us into a new era as they set the tables for feasts of goodness that will continue long after these Olympics have concluded. Amanda Hindler Voss, a young minister in DC, wrote specifically about women athletes and the vibe they brought to these games. A vibe of support and uplift, of friendship and strength, the kind of vibe that comes from having learned to speak the truth. Speaking the truth, though, is sometimes costly, as it was for the young Afghani breakdancer who was disqualified for wearing her free Afghan women cape during her performance. Being truly who she was in the midst of a horrendous hypocrisy and bias was not easy, but it brought the young woman with an X and a Y chromosome to a gold medal for her country in boxing. Simone Biles, who many thought would never return to the Olympics, and certainly not at her previous level, has been a key part of ushering in this new way of being an athlete through her role in women's gymnastics. Simone's willingness to speak openly about her mental health and the example she sets by respecting her rivals and honoring her teammates at every turn has changed that sport. With everything Simone does, she is teaching female athletes and all of us about the ways we can bless and help heal those around us. I don't know if Simone Biles has a little faith, a lot of faith, absolutely no faith, but I do know this. Right now, she seems a lot like Jesus to me. In the gospel message for today, we find an exhausted Jesus who had just been told of the horrendous death of his cousin John. Unspeakable horror. Jesus knew his own life was in danger, and yet he arrived at a deserted place to be alone. And then the crowds who were following him showed up. He could have chosen to duck and run, but he did not. Instead, he sat down with them and blessed and healed all of those who had gathered. And when the day was ending and it was time to go home, Jesus told his closest friends to get the table set and to create a feast with what they had to feed the hunger of the bodies and the spirits of those people. While watching the athletes compete at the Olympics is always the first important piece for most people, I love watching the crowds. I don't know how the process works. I don't know if the countries of the athletes pay for parents and families to come or if families have scrimped and saved for years to see the one who carries their hopes and dreams compete. What I do know is that it is an honor to just make it to the Olympics. And you can see the joy in the family's faces. You can hear it in their voices as they cheer their loved ones on. You can feel it, even through your screens, how deeply this is for them and how it resides in their bones. The crowds at the Olympics come from many walks of life. The 10,714 athletes come from peoples and cultures in 206 countries around the world. The athletes and their family come from places of peace and places of war. They come from wealthy countries and they come from nations who can no longer afford to feed their people. They come from the heartlands and the islands and places that are overflowing with people and places that have vast stretches of emptiness that can no longer sustain the people of their land. The athletes and their families also come from places where your sexual orientation can mean death. 
if it is discovered. And they come from places where there is fear that their rights will be taken away by those who believe God is a God of exclusion rather than inclusion. And in the middle of this time we are living in, the Paris Olympics set a table and created a feast to bless and heal all the beautiful diversity of our world. This is what they wanted to portray with their wild Paris-style feast inspired by Greek mythology at the opening ceremony. Sadly, there were those who perhaps because they were unaware of ancient history decided that the feast seen at the opening ceremony mocked Leonardo da Vinci's painting of the Last Supper. Bless Leonardo's heart. Some historians tell us he probably would have liked that Paris-style feast better than he would have liked his own painting. <laughs> the purpose of the political religious heat who became so incensed was sadly misguided. In their deepest parts, they truly believed they had to protect the table of Jesus. But their underlying purpose was to exclude everyone that the divine loves and they fear. It would be helpful for them and for us to go back and read all the table stories of Jesus again. Not only were there some wild parties, you know, remember that wedding where the water got turned to wine, there were also many tables filled with all the wrong kinds of people that Jesus absolutely loved. I think those tables felt like our table every time we share communion. When we stand and offer you the bread and the fruit of the vine, there are always tears and there is always gratitude and laughter and goodness and grace and acknowledgement that we all belong in this place. The Olympics, it turns out, were like a really great sermon for me, one that I didn't have to write. Because I was reminded once again of all the tables where I have been blessed and where I have been healed. I am so grateful for this table and for all the tables we are setting and all the feasts we are creating as we share this amazing life with each other, with our neighbors, and with the world.